Item number SCP-1111, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. A restricted zone has been established in a 2 km radius around SCP-1111-2. A public statement was released declaring it to be a weather monitoring station. Cameras are suspended from weather balloons, constantly monitoring the enclosure. Individuals may not come within one kilometer of SCP-1111-2 without explicit written permission from a level 4 researcher or higher. Should SCP-1111-1 move away from SCP-1111-2, all personnel are to evacuate the restricted zone until SCP-1111-1 returns to its position beneath SCP-1111-2. Description SCP-1111-1 is an entity with an appearance similar to that of a Canis familiaris, commonly known as the domestic dog. The size of SCP-1111-1 varies with its distance from SCP-1111-2. Directly beneath it, SCP-1111-1 is approximately 150 centimeters from ground to shoulders. The exact read of SCP-1111-1 is unclear. It appears to be a mix with traits of both a Labrador Retriever and a German Shepherd rarely visible. SCP-1111-1 possesses a white coat and red eyes, both of which glow at luminosities directly proportional to its proximity to SCP-1111-2. At distances greater than 500 meters from SCP-1111-2, SCP-1111-1 gradually becomes translucent. Additionally, SCP-1111-1 speed, strength, and agility all seem to be inversely proportional to its distance from SCP-1111-2. A dog tag is affixed to a faded red collar around SCP-1111-1's neck. The tag reads, Loyal. Left alone, SCP-1111-1 lies down beneath SCP-1111-2. It does not appear to sleep, or, if it does, it is able to do so with its eyes completely open. It does not eat, drink, or breathe. Should SCP-1111-1 become aware of any person or object coming near SCP-1111-2, it will quickly become hostile and attempt to destroy the intruder. SCP-1111-1 has significantly increased physical abilities above a standard canine. Video records show it running at speeds in axis of 60 km per hour, jumping 6 meters into the air and biting through 15mm titanium plating. SCP-1111-1 appears to be incorporeal, and as such attempts to both neutralize it and examine SCP-1111-2 more closely have been met with failure. See Incident Log 1111-B for details. SCP-1111-2 has the appearance of a man hanged by a noose from a tree. The subject wears a faded business suit and dress shoes. Both are too worn to properly identify a manufacturer. SCP-1111-2 constantly jerks and twitches in a manner consistent with those of a man being hanged. Occasionally, gasp for breath can also be heard. The violence and energy of these jerks is directly proportional to SCP-1111-1's proximity to SCP-1111-2. As the distance between the two increases, the jerks and twitches decrease in violence and frequency. Incident Log 1111-B Date May 2nd, 19 Beep A team of Beep agents was sent to attempt to neutralize SCP-1111-1 for transportation to a containment facility. The team approached SCP-1111-2 from the north, opposite the direction of SCP-1111-1 was facing. The agents were able to come within 300 meters of SCP-1111-2, at which point SCP-1111-1 rose and attacked agents without warning. Agent Beep, realizing that the mission had failed, began to flee the area. SCP-1111-1 pursued 
that decrease in size, definition, and speed as it grew further and further away from SCP-1111-2. When SCP-1111-1 reached a distance of 900 meters from SCP-1111-2, SCP-1111-2 was observed to stop moving entirely. At this point, SCP-1111-1 rose for a moment and turned its head towards SCP-1111-2. SCP-1111-1 stayed in this position for a few seconds before howling once and sprinting back towards SCP-1111-2. SCP-1112 was observed to resume its jerking and twitching. Video records of the incident indicate that rounds fired at SCP-1111-1 passed through it without making contacts, despite the fact its teeth and claws proved solid when attacking agents. Agent Beep was the only one to survive the incident. From this point forward, only D-Class and remote operated drones may be used to approach SCP-1111 directly. Date, May 20th, 1990 Beep. Beep D-Class armed with data expunge was sent to approach SCP-1112 from various directions. Incident proved similar to previous attempt. SCP-1111 proceeded to kill all D-Class present. During the incident, D-83011 was able to come within 50 meters of SCP-1112 before being killed. During this time, cameras noted an anomaly with SCP-1112, its jerks lowered and its eyes opened and fixed on D-83011. SCP-1112's arms then raised towards D-83011 and what appeared to observers as a welcoming embrace. Months before D-83011 was killed by SCP-1111, SCP-1112's lips can be seen moving, mouthing what appeared to be the words, No! Down boy! Immediately after the death of D-83011, SCP-1112 fell limb and resumed normal twitching. It appears as though simply isolating SCP-1112 is enough to effectively contain SCP-1111. As such, all further testing is suspended, barring a significant development, until further notice.